Welcome to Tampa, Florida, home of the 2022 Ideal Elite Trades Championship Series. Tonight, inside the Tampa Convention Center, the four top professional auto technicians in the country squaring off to see who will take home the title of U.S. Auto Tech National Champion. All right, who's excited to get started? Three, two, one, go! Boy, I think it's exciting. And this is actually a sport with somebody who really knows what they're doing, and I think it's great to see this happening. Being there with like a whole bunch of other competitors that have so much experience. Yeah, I'm just trying to qualify, make it to Tampa. There is so much skill, so much talent shown in this competition. Go! Take the number one! Whoa! This competition is awesome. Hi everyone and welcome to the 2022 U.S. Auto Tech National Championship. I'm your host Joel Gadet. I'm joined by ASE certified master technician Faye Hadley. They were in store for an amazing competition. We are, that's right Joel, and I'm so excited not only to shine a spotlight on this essential trade, but also give the hardworking men and women of the automotive industry an opportunity to show off their skills and really get the recognition that they deserve. Tonight, four professional auto technicians are competing for a chance to take home the title of national champion. Hundreds attempted to qualify across 17 different events around the country. Earlier today, we whittled down the field from the top 16 to the final four with the best of the best to be named national champion before we're done tonight, as well as walk away with $40,000. Yeah, that ought to get these guys pretty excited. Yeah, 40 k is no small chunk of change. Let's meet our field of professional auto techs here in the final. From Greenville, Ohio, there's Tyler Anderson. At 19, he started his own business and has been working nonstop ever since. From New Riggle, Ohio, David Borner, an automotive technician for 21 years and also a part of the volunteer fire department in his hometown. From McMillan, Michigan, Jonathan Pope, a pro in the trade with decades of experience. He's here looking to show exactly what he can do. And finally, from Sydney, Ohio, Andrew Bueller, an auto technician instructor. He's in his second year here at the Auto Tech National Championships, and he's hoping to come away with his first W. Who will it be? The time has come. Our final four technicians are ready to duke it out and determine who the master of motors is. Let's take a look at what these guys have to look forward to as we bring in our schematic breakdown that's sponsored by Service Titan. In the final round for the professional auto technicians, they'll be facing a diagnostic challenge to identify faults on a late model GM V8 engine. To make their diagnosis, they'll be performing a leak down test as well as a compression test on all eight cylinders. Once the faults are identified, they'll request the replacement parts from the judges and reassemble the engine's specification before clocking out. Now the competitors will only have three hours to complete this challenge and they will be judged on safety, quality, and completion of work. The third member of our crew is Chip Wade. He's down on the floor with one of those hopefuls. Chip. Andrew. Yep. Is everything in order? Looks like it. You got a whole toolbox for this challenge. Does that strike a little bit of fear? <laughs> Say nothing scares you, huh? No, not yet. How you feeling? Good. Feeling confident? Oh, yeah. I feel like you should feel confident after the first round. You blazed through it. Obviously, a great score. Keep your focus. Keep your cool. I know you will. You strike me as that kind of guy. Oh, yeah. All right, man. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> And that was an interesting question from Chip, you know, would you be intimidated by that many tools? Maybe in the sense that this is not your toolbox, it's definitely going to slow you down trying to figure out where everything is, but I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, man, the more tools I have to get this job done, the better. And the newer the tools I have, the better. Oh, absolutely, look at those things, I would like them in my toolbox. All right, fans, count them down with me in three, two, one, go! All right, we are officially underway here, starting with this engine. It is a V8 5.3 liter GM engine, and you're using it in this type of setting outside of the vehicle, so it's a little bit cleaner to work with. Yeah, and look at this thing, it's brand new. But that also can be a little bit of a disadvantage as well, too, though, because sometimes you can tell what's happening with an engine because of issues presented on the outside. So, you know, a, a leak in a certain area or a chip in a certain area. In this case, we have no clues being given by these brand new engines. We've got something wrong with them, but 
you know, there's there's not really a lot helping us out. Right now, we've got some spark plug wire removal. So it looks like everyone's sort of going towards the leak down or compression test first, pulling out these spark plugs. Looks like the competitors are definitely planning on turning these engines. Oh, oh, oh gosh. All right, he is using um, power tools there, removing those spark plugs. That's not something I would necessarily do. Those are aluminum cylinder heads. Aluminum is a very soft metal. And let's say, since that's not his tool, he accidentally goes to tighten instead of loosen. Well, who's gonna lose in that equation? It's the cylinder head. There we go, we got hand tools, that's a proper. Now he can loosen just a little bit with the hand tool, then go in with the impact. That would be the proper way to do it. Here's our first look now at Tyler Anderson. He's owned his own auto repair shop in Western Ohio, just across the Indiana border since 2016. Think about the fact that he's only 26 years old. Oh my gosh, yeah. Looks like he's struggling with those brand new tools a little bit, actually. This is a problem I have too. You buy something brand new, it's a little hard to uh, remove and replace these sockets onto that extension there. Either that or he grabbed the wrong one by mistake in his hurry. Back over to David Borer, also from Ohio. This is a very Ohio-centric competition. <laughs> Three of our four competitors in this final hail from the Buckeye State. Interesting, we're seeing a little difference in strategy. Some of these folks have left their spark plug wires on um, and others have removed them completely. We don't know what's actually wrong with these engines just yet. I wouldn't necessarily remove them just in case. Once again, it could be a clue. Maybe we have a misfire on one of the cylinders. Maybe a wire is a problem. You remove them too quickly without keeping them in order and you could lose an essential clue potentially in diagnosing this engine. We'll see if the removal of those spark plugs winds up being a miscue as we roll on from the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship next. The 2022 U.S. Auto Tech National Championship on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Middle Giant, the strongest, safest, most versatile ladders in the world. By Duluth Trading Company, dedicated to people who do. And by Service Titan, the leader in field service management software. Back here at the Tampa Convention Center, the competitors are underway here with their diagnostic evaluation and repair of their late model GM V8 engine. These four pros have worked really hard throughout the competition just to get to this point. So let's take a look back at how they got here thanks to our friends at 7-Eleven. In the run-up to this event, hundreds attempted to qualify across 17 different events around the country. 32 professionals advanced to an online quiz and then the top 16 made it here to Tampa. Earlier today, in the round of 16, the professional technicians were tasked with a driveline, brake, and suspension system service. The pros were given 90 minutes to remove, identify, and replace U-joints on a drive shaft, brake pads and rotor, as well as a complete strut assembly and a knuckle. The challenge came down to the wire, with many struggling to finish, Last year's champion, Logan Brown, clocked out with only a minute to spare. But it wasn't enough. Tyler Anderson, David Borer, Andrew Bueller, and Jonathan Pope all moved on here to the finals, which means we're going to have a new national champion this year. And Faye, the question is, who will it be? We are working through the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship. Now we have to test these engines. A couple of different options off the start. Absolutely. So they've been provided with leak down testers and compression testers. We can see that some of our contestants are using both of them. Other competitors are using only the leak down tester or only the compression tester. It's just interesting seeing the variety of approaches that these competitors are taking. We've got other competitors here. We've got noise in the shop. We've got folks in the stands watching and cheering on. So they're trying to pay attention to is there cylinder leakage, what percentage, and, and where? Is it coming out the intake valve? Is it coming out the exhaust valve? Is it coming out the head gasket? Where is it going? Andrew Bueller, I'll use layman's terms, just took the top off the engine. <laughs> What's that called? That is the intake plenum, and that's a little isolator, just a squishy piece of rubber there that just insulates um, the fuel rails there that we're seeing. And now he's getting ready to remove those. Looks like he's removing the coil packs right now. Yep, yep, yep. So he's going to be removing that valve cover next. So at this point, he knows he's got to go deep into that engine. So he definitely found something during his compression and leak down testing. So testing is a big piece of this, but it's not just that. You also have to complete worksheets as you go through this competition. Showing your work to the judges, is that something you would do every day on a job? Yes, in the shop it's called repair order. As a technician, you've also got to write a story. With your diagnosis, you need to be able to tell the customer, here's what I found, here's what has to be repaired, and why. 
All right, so here it looks like Tyler is checking out these lifters, and he looks a little confused. Almost like he was expecting to find something there, but didn't. Right, because he's back at the engine right now, so looking something over. He did not find the answer he was looking for initially. Going back in, so he's got that flashlight pointed down inside, probably looking at the camshaft right there. That's all he could be looking at. And he sees something. Oh, yes. He had a little smirk on his face. Oh, yeah, look at him. <laughs> he knows. He knows something. He's got a secret there. And looks like he probably knows what he's in for for the rest of this competition. We saw Tyler Anderson working on one side of the engine. What's David Borer here doing on the other? Looks like David is going in and removing that front cover right now. Behind that is going to be the timing gears and chain. And it looks like the water pump is also a part of that. So I'm really curious what he's found out. Still early on here in our hike through that three hour job as we get to know the competitors, including John Pope here from Michigan's Upper Peninsula, McMillan, Michigan. John's been at this for quite a while, thanks in part to the influence of his father. You know, there's probably times that grew up that I questioned what I was doing, if it was right or not. But for the most part, I knew what I wanted and I went for it. My name is Jonathan Pope. I am from McMillan, Michigan. I couldn't really pinpoint an exact age that I got started. My dad was an over-the-road trucker. He was just one of those guys that if something broke, he did it himself. And I was always there helping, watching, and taking it all in. As far as I can remember, I was helping my dad work on stuff and doing brake jobs out in the yard or changing U-joints, you know, so I've, I've changed a lot of U-joints in my life. So it was nice that that was the first round. If I win the competition, yeah, my, my family would be thrilled. They're all rooting for me. My wife is Amber. We just celebrated our 11th year last October. I met Amber at work. Probably knew each other for a few years before I, I finally asked her out. The first time I asked her out, she turned me down. The following year, his girlfriend broke up with him. And I secretly said, yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. I, I didn't give up, and, and the rest is history. Here we are. Without her, I couldn't do what I do. I got three girls. Emma's my oldest, Anna is my middle child, and Elizabeth is my youngest. I have all girls in my life, and I love it. Besides working automotive, my biggest dream was to get married and have a family. I've gotten everything I've, I've ever dreamed of. Very happy with my life, very satisfied. I'm a very blessed man. Great to hear about the support that John has back at home. A 21 hour drive away up in Michigan. Yes, he drove the entire way down to Tampa. His family's back up north still supporting him and he's with Chip. Jonathan. Yeah. How's it going, man? Uh, okay, I think. Yeah? Yeah. You found any problems yet? Um, yeah, I believe it's a bad camshaft. What gives you that inclination? Um, the lobe on the first uh, cylinder two here is worn down. Good luck, man. It looks cool. All right, thank you. Awesome. Here's Andrew Bueller. Wow, I wonder what he sees. He is removing, it looks like he's removing the bolts for the oil pan. I wonder if he plans on taking the entire oil pan off or if he's only removing those bolts that attach it to the front cover. Oh, wow, he's taking the whole pan off. He's going for the pan. Now keep in mind that all of the competitors have the same problems on their engines, so it's not curveballs being thrown at each different station here. And you could remove that oil pan to get to that front cover, but it might be an unnecessary step that might slow him down. I'm not sure I would do that if it's only for the front cover that he's got to get off. Let's talk a little bit more about oil. Chip is with Tyler. Tyler, I didn't realize you are having to take the whole thing apart. Yeah, we're having a big old time tonight. Now, what are you taking out there? That would be the camshaft. Now, why are you doing that? Because we got a lobe right there that is not a, should have a lobe on it like that, and it is completely ground flat before we don't have compression on that cylinder. So it's not it's not lifting the cylinder at all? Correct. So you have to replace the whole thing? How often are you going to see that, Faye? Very, very rarely. It's way more likely that in the field, you would have a bad lifter. As you can see, that camshaft is one unit. You cannot just replace one of those lobes if they go bad. Those lobes being worn basically means that they were not holding those valves into place. So that cylinder he found no compression on led him to this diagnosis of a bad camshaft. 
we come on back, it is the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship on CBS Sports Network. Back in Tampa, the 2022 U.S. Auto Tech National Championships. Chip Wade down on the floor with Drew Jablonowski of Garage Gurus to talk about the support they've shown for this program. I'm here with Drew Jablonowski from Garage Gurus. Now, he actually came up with a challenge that the competitors are competing in right now. Tell me a little bit about your passion for the trades and why it's so important that we keep getting more trades into this job. Well, Chip, I love this event because I really think it helps to encourage people to join the trades. You know, it's a good thing to do. Getting your hands dirty, you know. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with going to college. I think college is great. People should definitely seek that education, but technology is changing. Um, we're getting older. We're not getting any younger. So hopefully we can help drive more people to the trades, and this is a great way to do it. Thank you, Drew. Back to you, Joel Okay. This is shaping up to be just another great final round this year. Let's take a look back real quick at last year's inaugural competition that's brought to us by Duluth Trading Company. Last year in Nashville, the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship welcomed 32 professionals and apprentices from around the country to compete for the title of the nation's top technician. The top five up and coming auto techs in the country went head to head in the apprentice finals. It was a hard fought competition, but in the end, it was Randy Giroux from Lima, Ohio that took home the top prize. The four finals were a high stakes showdown of the nation's top professional talent. Time was of the essence, causing many competitors to rush and in turn, forget important elements and damaged parts. After a grueling final round, it was Logan Brown from Lebanon, Pennsylvania that was the first ever professional technician to have his name etched into the history books of the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship. Faye, it's one thing to take an engine apart, it's another thing to put it back together. Which one would you rather be doing? The disassembly is uh, the much more fun part in my mind. Reassembly here is gonna be really tricky. Not only are they being judged on speed, but also on proper technique. So every single fastener has to be torqued properly. That timing chain has to go on in a certain way. We also saw some RTV being used. As soon as that comes out of the tube, you have five minutes to install that component before the RTV gets a little bit too solid. And then you've got to start all over again. We check back down in once more with Chip. Wow, David. This is a lot of detail work. Yes, it is. Kind of move, remove this whole gasket? Yes, one time use. One time use, so if you take it apart, you gotta replace it. Yep, and you only got five minutes to put it back together. You've got this thing pretty much all broken down. Do you feel like the hardest part's over? Uh, usually it takes more time to put something back together than it does take it apart. So you're saying no? Yeah. Well, keep your focus and finish it up. All right, awesome. All right, man, good luck. Anyone that has worked in this field has had to struggle with that style of gasket maker and the time clock. And gosh, I'm not sure I know a single person that would rather put something back together than, than take it apart. Oh gosh, that head gasket is bending a little bit. Problem with gold pliers and both of you delpins. You know. Yikes, you don't want to bend that, you'll lose compression. We're halfway home, an hour and 30 minutes left. Tyler Anderson, our youngest competitor, also seems to be our furthest competitor along here. Will he be the first to finish? We'll have to hang around here in Tampa and find out. It's the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship. Back here in Tampa at the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship, a ton of energy and anticipation. And look at all those happy fans and prideful people with their families. I love that woman's shirt. If your husband can't fix it, mine can. We've got some husbands down on the floor trying to fix these engines. We'll head back down to Chip. He is with last year's winner, Logan Brown, eliminated in the semifinal round, but here to support his fellow contestants. I found you. Yeah. So you're back supporting the competition, huh? Yep. yep. So having competed and been successful last year, you know exactly what it, these guys are going through oh, yeah. right now. What, what do you think they're feeling? A lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Uh, it's definitely nerve wracking. Yeah. Who do you think is ahead right now? Can you tell? Right here. He, he's miles ahead of everyone right now. What are you seeing, you know, back at the shop at home, like with, with, with younger folks getting into this? I mean, where is their skill level? Where is their competency from your perspective? You get some guys that can barely change oil, and then you get these rock star kids like this who you could throw any job at them. They may have never done it before, but they could get it done. It's just something you have a knack for. Well, man, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for being here. Awesome, Thank bud. You. 
Oh, absolutely. No, just till fully seated, just to break through some of that Loctite, because like right about, and then that's it. It's well, you heard Logan Brown that. call out Tyler Anderson for doing so well, and he just continues to motor through. He really does. Now, we're using an impact right now. Once again, that's not something I would recommend, but did you see how he explained to the judges why he was using that? Right before she makes contact, back that one off just a little bit, started to see. We can see Tyler is explaining to the judges why he did that to break through that lock tight because it would just take too long to do by hand with hand tools. So using the impact to get the bolts down just a certain amount and then using the hand tools for the rest of the job. That's why Tyler's so detail oriented. It's why he's right now leading the pack. Let's learn more about the youngest competitor in the field, Tyler Anderson. If you don't believe in yourself, no one's going to do it for you. You got to be your own number one fan, in my opinion. My name is Tyler Anderson, and I'm from Greenville, Ohio. I remember I was, I was 12 or 13 years old, and my dad brought home this little, little small engine, little five horse Briggs and Stratton that he found out in somebody's scrap pile or something. I don't know how he came across it. And he came home from work the next day, and I had the thing completely tore apart, scattered all over his garage floor. That's kind of what sparked it for me was just knowing you can take something apart and put it back together. I for sure had a lot of people when I first started my business that, you know, saw how young I was. And you could just tell they weren't trusting, obviously. You don't want to bring your newer vehicle to come into some 19-year-old kid. I decided to give my ASC master certification just to kind of put some faith in. People have some faith in me knowing that I'm not just saying I can fix your car. I, you know, have the proof. My wife motivates me a lot, just keeps, keeps me going. She's definitely my rock. So we met just after senior year of high school, been together kind of ever since. By the time I met her, I was just actually getting ready to start this business, um, and she was full support of it. There's many times in owning and operating a small business that you are unsure. Is this even worth it? What am I doing? And um, you just gotta keep moving, can't quit. If I, if I were to go back and you give me two options, I think I would still pick the automotive field. Um, it's just always clicked very well with me. Um, it always came naturally to me for the most part. Definitely something I don't think I can throw away. Really elite guy there, Tyler Anderson, his wife Hannah cheering on from the crowd as well. Continues to lead the pack here at our Auto Tech Championship. Is it allowed to run down with the impact and then torque? Once at least seats, okay. And look at that again, attention to There's detail, to confirming shift. with the judges what he is and is not allowed to do. Let's get it close to nine foot pounds. Here we have Andrew wanting to use the proper torque specifications. He's using his experience and his feel to get that as close to right as possible. Explain the difference in layman's terms for me in terms of the amount of torque each of these wrenches has. Why are they not just the same wrench? Good question. So those are torque wrenches. They're calibrated for a specific range of torque. It could be anywhere from 20 foot-pounds to 100 foot-pounds, let's say, on each one of those. Maybe they need seven foot-pounds. I'm not sure exactly what the specifications are, but if the minimum it goes to is 20, you're not going to be able to get seven out of there. And the wrong torque means what? You can damage the metal. You can strip the threads. That part won't seal. That gasket won't seal. One hour left. Thanks. One hour left to go here in Tampa time, ticking away, but we know that speed is only part of the equation to being named champion today. These technicians also being judged on their workmanship as well as their safety practices. And for more on that, it's time for our little giant safety report. I'm here with Paul, one of our judges here on the floor to talk a little bit about safety. I mean, there's a lot going on here. What can go wrong and what are you looking for to make sure these guys stay safe? Chip, there is a lot that can go wrong. They're, you know, if they're using a tool improperly and they start hitting it and the tool would shatter, they could hurt themselves or a fellow competitor. Liquid spilled on the floor. There's multitude of things can happen. There's the electricity involved with the batteries up to the starters. And what about eyewear? Oh, eyewear is a very high, high risk area. So we actually have in the competition points deducted for improper safety procedures. Well, I know you're trying to keep the guys safe, but you're also trying to make sure they replicate what would happen in a real garage here on the competition floor to make it realistic, but also keep them safe. You are correct. Awesome. You know, in a, in a real garage, we have to worry about all these kind of hazards and many more. You're working underneath a vehicle that's up in the air above your head. You need to be safety conscious in your environment. Well, thanks for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right, back to you guys.
Chip, thank you. It's actually a 15 minute penalty deduction if you do not wear your safety glasses properly. You have to be attentive to all those little details as we continue on the CBS Sports Spectacular and the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship. Crowd cheering our competitors on down the home stretch here at the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship. Well into this competition, and let's talk details here. You've got some things you need to keep in mind, some key things to focus on inside the final hour of competition. Chip has a little bit of an insight there. Here in the final turn of the competition, these competitors have to keep their wits about them. If you remember last year, we had a competitor forget an entire component at the 11th hour and it cost them the competition. This is not that they don't know what they need to do, it's the amount of focus that is required to cross the finish line. Back to you guys. Yeah, Chip, that was Bishop Ortiz last year that forgot to reconnect a couple of his components. Andrew Bueller, though, focused here on the task at hand, and it's not his first time putting his skills to the test or testing others. Let's learn a little bit more about the auto instructor himself from Sydney, Ohio. They can take everything from you but your education, and I tell the kids that. They can take your house, your money, your car. They can't take what's in your head. They can't take your education. My name's Andy Beeler, and I'm an auto tech instructor at Denver Valley Crew Center. I've always wanted to be a mechanic. My earliest memories of wanting to work on stuff is probably me taking toys and stuff apart. I was just always fascinated with how things work. My Uncle Buck, he worked heavy truck for years. He, he showed me a lot over the years. Uh, he passed away about a week ago, and we buried him yesterday. When I got the text that he passed away, it, it choked me up pretty bad. I got his picture in my pocket. He'd probably tell me he's proud. My wife Amy, she's great. Yeah, we got married in 2017. My favorite thing about Amy is her big heart. She's, she's very loving of people. Being a dad has, has turned my world upside down. It was kind of weird when I first had my little daughter. It's like you realize the things you do for your kids. It's, it's a whole different, whole different world now. Andrew Beeler! Going to the finals is exciting. It's a chance to redeem how I did last year kind of show off my, my skill ability, my knowledge. And last year, uh, I made it to Nashville. Got in on the brake flare, the Drift to Win competition. Uh, they did U-joints last year. I blew a U-joint out about 15 minutes into us going too fast. So uh, this was kind of a redemption year for me. And so my students and I, I treated them to watch the uh, U.S. Auto Tech Nationals at, at school. So my juniors and seniors all got to watch me screw up. My students have learned from my mistake. What I like about teaching is the, the ones that have graduated, when they come back. You can see that they're actually, they're growing and they're doing stuff. It's important to a kid to know that your education is important. You need your education because you can always fall back on it, make a living, support your family. So many of these tradesmen and women have followed in the footsteps of people closest to them, just like Andrew Bueller. Faye, you talked earlier about how much of a time suck it was going to be to take the bottom piece off of that engine. Now we're seeing the back half of that having to put everything back in place. Yes, and look at the oil there. You want to keep that really, really clean. The oil in the RTV cannot mix. If they do, you're not going to get a seal. Also note that there's a little rubber gasket in there as part of the pickup tube, it looks like. Probably one time use. I'm curious how many of these technicians remembered to replace that component. We are officially to the it is on portion of this competition. Just about a half hour remaining and Tyler Anderson is now cleaning up his station. That is step nine of this competition. Finishing up by cleaning up your station, making sure everything is back where it's supposed to be. That's his wife in the black shirt, his friends here cheering him on. Is there cause for concern here that Tyler Anderson is done so early? Is he this good? Or was he a little bit young and reckless down the backstretch here, 36 and change to go? He definitely looks like he's been moving a lot more frantically and quickly than the rest of the competitors. Andrew, however, is slow and steady, very calm, very focused. So sort of wondering what he's thinking right now. Have you seen him pour that oil yet? OK, all right, he's about to. We would hate to forget that in the very last moments, go to turn that engine over to prove to the judges that you're done, only to destroy that engine with lack of oil and lack of oil pressure. You're telling me that's a bad thing. Oh, it's a very bad thing. <laughs> it was close. I was watching you. <laughs> it was close. Look at Andrew. He is hand tightening each one of those spark plugs first, then using that torque. Let's see if he finishes up as well with that. Oh, what's he doing? 
What's he doing? I like to do his threading it in by hand first, making sure it's nice and safe in there. But I do not like the install with that impact. Oop, I would deduct points. All right, so now Tyler finishing off by putting the oil back in the engine. After how hard he's been working, wouldn't it be awful to forget something as basic as engine oil? Looking it over, last safety check here, hits that red button. There we go, An elite we performance from Tyler <laughs> Anderson. He it. is the first one finished here at the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship. Nice job, Thank man. You. Man, that was a marathon. Yes, it was. Oh, my goodness. That was a job. What was the hardest part about this? Just the amount of work, or was there a specific thing? I'd say definitely the amount of it. Um, and then also uh, just making sure you got timing marks all lined back up and make sure you torque everything in the right sequence and whatnot. I mean, it's definitely tedious, but you got to make sure you do it right. When you're back in the shop, this type of job, how long would this normally take you? Depends on uh, depends on the situation, but a lot longer than an hour and a hour and a half, or what a two and a half hours, whatever it was. <laughs> Man, you are absolutely blazing! What a remarkable accomplishment! I mean, this is so impressive to see what you had to do to take it all down, diagnose it, and properly fix it, and put it all back together. Yeah and still have your wits about you. Correct, yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Well, man, go grab yourself a water, get you something to drink, Will take do. a load off. Now it's time for the judges to dive in and see how you did. Hopefully will. Awesome. We'll Congrats, man. I appreciate it. All in the hands of the judges. Andrew Bueller hot on Tyler's heels. Again, time is not the only deciding factor, but Bueller right now in line to be the second finisher. Thank you, baby. All sweaty and nasty. <laughs> You're watching the 2022 U.S. Auto Tech National Championship. Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the pro finals of the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship. Earlier in the day, students competed separately to determine our top student technician in the country. Our apprentice round recap is brought to us by the University of Northwestern Ohio. The top 16 students in the country were tasked with a driveline service that included a U-joint removal, identification, and replacement. Only four competitors moved on to the final round. Alexander Black, Yusef Kisa, and Jeremy Waller were among those finalists, along with the returning champion, Randy Giroux. The final round challenge, similar to the pros, was to diagnose and repair a mechanical engine fault on a late model GM V8 engine. The technicians were given three hours and all were able to complete the challenge in that allotted time, but not without some difficulties along the way. In the end for the second consecutive year was Randy Giroux taking home the trophy and he keeps that title as the top student auto technician in the country. History being made here at the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship. We have one technician finished Faye and three more nearing the end. We are so close here. Look, Andrew's getting on his exhaust manifold. Looks like he just has the other one left to go and maybe adding oil and he'll be done. So hopefully the judges are as impressed with his performance and his workmanship as I have been from watching him this entire time. This is a three hour challenge. The pressure is on because we are closing in on 25 minutes left in competition. Tyler Anderson already finished. Looks like Andrew Bueller is on to that final step of cleaning up his workstation. Heading over here to the red button. And a moment of pause. It almost looked like he was ready to finish. <gasps> oh my god, the oil. Also again, the oil. again. Wow. So we are two for two. Not only in about to be complete, but also in forgetting the oil, which, oh my gosh, as a technician, this is something you never want your customers to forget. You definitely don't want other technicians to forget. We need a fluorescent blinking <laughs> sign in the arena. Remember the oil. Hit the red button. There we go. Yes. Andrew Bueller is done. Nice. How was it? You feel confident? Always, right? Oh, yeah. You're Andrew in a, Bueller. In, a, in two hours and 40 minutes to do a cam, yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel now? Good. Relieved. I bet. I'm go find a seat and a drink. <laughs> Well, you've earned it 100%. I'm so proud of you, man. Thank you, man. Congratulations. We'll see what the judges have to say. All right. All right, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> you could hear it in Andrew Bueller's tone of voice. Two hours and 40 minutes for a camshaft. It is an extremely impressive time. 20 minutes to Two go. competitors done. Two competitors still out on the floor. You see Jonathan Pope moving really methodically. You can hear Chip 20 minutes. I don't know if Jonathan's going to finish, so he's really working on that workmanship component here. Although maybe the clock's starting to factor in for David Bohr. 
fast fingers here as he rushes through. Chip is with the judges. So there's two of the four pros finished up. How, how, are, you, how are they looking? You know, Chip, I really like Tyler's reaction when you know, he got up there, he had a flashlight in his mouth, he was turning the engine over, looking down in there because he thought it was a lifter. But when he pulled that out and looked down there and saw there was no low, he, he kind of gave a little laugh, like, oh my, you gotta be kidding me. Um, you know, just his reaction, realizing how much work he knew needed to go into this thing. But he really killed it. He did a great job with this engine, and I think he's gonna have a great score. Thanks, guys. I'm gonna let you get back at it. I know you'll have a lot of work to do. Thanks. Bay, we heard the judges talking about their impressions of Tyler. If we go back in time here, I think we found the moment where Tyler Anderson kind of tasted victory. He's got that flashlight in his mouth, looking at the lobes of the camshaft, seeing if there's an issue. There he goes, turning it over and is not seeing that lobe. <laughs> there's that moment right there. Look at that smirk. What did you think of what the judges thought of Tyler? I love how they caught him in that aha moment. That's what every technician wants, is to find the smoking gun of a problem and then feel confident in your diagnosis and repair. Judging going on on half the field. You have the other half of the field still competing, although it looks like David Borer is finishing up cleaning his station. Might make it more nerve wracking knowing that my competitors are done, the judging has already begun. I want to get myself as close to finished as humanly possible, and I think that's what's going to happen here. Oh, that's got to feel good. Oh, yeah. Nice job. It means that our only competitor left on the floor right now is Jonathan Pope. But look, he still has tools in his pocket. They might deduct points for that because cleaning up your workstation and putting everything away is part of this competition. Five minutes. Five minutes left. Five minutes left here for Jonathan Pope to work. Oh gosh, last man standing. I can imagine how stressful this is. Inside the final 30 seconds now, we are coming down to it. Jonathan Pope, the last man standing. Remember, time is one component. He's relying on the workmanship score here, trying to run up the tally there. He's still calm under pressure despite all of this. That's a technician that I would want working in my shop. He's not rushing through anything. Chip has the final countdown. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Tools down. Tools are down. The competition is Jonathan. finished. It is all in the oh. judges' hands here at the oh. U.S. Auto Tech National Championship. Thanks. Competition is over. When we come on back, there will be a brand new 2022 U.S. Auto Tech National Champion. Who will it be? We will find out next on CBS Sports Network. The 2022 U.S. Auto Tech National Championship on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by 7-Eleven, Take It to 11, by Garage Gurus, premium automotive training, and by the University of Northwestern Ohio. Turn your passion into a career. Back in Tampa at the U.S. Auto Tech National Championship, the engines are idled and our four techs await the judges' decision. One soon being crowned our national champion. Faye, what are these judges looking for right now? Oh gosh, there are a lot of factors that the judges are going to have to comb through right now in order to determine our winner. And we've seen all day that the fastest competitor is in no way guaranteed the victory. I mean, an engine like this is so intricate that the judges are seeing everything on a totally different level. At this point still, anyone could win. Now, if you're an auto technician at home watching this, either pro or student, and you want to try your hand at qualifying, we have good news. The U.S. Auto Tech National Championship is back in 2023. Visit USATNC.com now for information and updates on how you can compete with the best in the United States. Yes, absolutely. There are so many incredible automotive technicians out there. So to all those students and professionals, sign up and qualify. Show us what you can do. And before our professional U.S. Auto Tech National Champion is crowned for 2022, let's take a look back at how the Pro Finals played out this year, sponsored by Flex Power Tools. We began the day with a semifinal that pitted the talents of the top 16 auto techs in the country. When the round came to a close, it was Tyler Anderson, Jonathan Pope, Andrew Bueller, and David Borer advancing to the finals. The competitors were tasked with diagnosing and repairing a mechanical engine fault on a late model GM V8 engine. With different levels of experience, each auto technician One approached this challenge left. a little bit differently. 
Tyler Anderson finished the job first, closely followed by Andrew Bueller. Time, though, is just one component of this competition. Anybody could come out on top. The judges are taking a closer look now and are going to have the final say. Well, Joel, someone is walking out of here with $40,000 and a national title, and it looks like it's time to find out. Chip has those judges' results. The final tally is in. Chip, take it away. Let's give it up for our professionals. Nice job, guys. All right, we're going to start with fourth place, taking home a Duluth prize pack from Sydney, Ohio, Andrew Buehler. All right, next up in third place, taking home a $10,000 check from McMillan, Jonathan Pope. Congratulations, nice work, nice work. All right, we're gonna go straight to number one. Bringing home the $40,000 grand prize for the Auto Tech National Championship professional competition. Let's give it up from Greenville, Ohio, Tyler Anderson. Tyler Anderson, the young gun gets it done. 26 years of age and your national champion. That is so impressive. Oh my gosh, his family must be so proud of him. And what a good example for future technicians in the automotive industry. He's been in this field for 10 years. He owns his own auto repair shop. He is the future of the auto technician industry. And in 2022, Tyler Anderson is the king of the mountain. I love this is the biggest smile I've seen all, all day. Yes, sir. Well, it's definitely well-deserved and it's earned $40,000 and an awesome trophy. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling great. Um, it was a boatload of fun. Um, honestly, in that last round, I kind of forgot I was in a competition for a little bit. Just kind of doing my thing, having a good time. So it was, it was awesome. Well, at 26 years old, I mean, I'm super impressed. The Thank amount you. of skill uh, and just technical expertise that you showed. Obviously, you have the youthful energy as well. <laughs> I think that played into it a yeah, little bit. It was amazing. Bit. It was yeah. a marathon, uh, but you, you, you crossed the finish line in first place. So rumor has it, there's some other news that's exciting as well. Yeah, we're, uh, this kind of came at a good time because me and my wife are now expecting, so we got that future coming, so that'll be pretty, pretty sweet. Congratulations, is Thank it your you. first one? Yes, it is. Well, yep. I know this money is gonna go a long way towards helping you guys Absolutely. establish that new phase of the family, so you have a Absolutely. lot to celebrate. Thank you, yeah. Super exciting, sure. man. Yeah, it's a great Absolutely. time. Thank you. <laughs> this kid is fantastic. What a great example to up and coming technicians all across the country. Shouts to David Borer as well. He comes in second place, but it is Tyler Anderson. Just a dominating performance. He leaves King of the Mountain in Tampa.